Hi everyone, Peter here from the Esoteric Order of Gamers. Today we are going to look at something very exciting, ISS Vanguard from Awaken Realms. Now I'm very excited about this because I didn't think I'd be able to score a copy. I don't really back Kickstarters anymore because they're so expensive to send down to New Zealand. I can't really afford it. So um, I can only cover them if the publisher is kind enough to send me review copies. And Awaken Realms has, in this case, they've sent me uh, the first wave of ISS Vanguard. So I'm very, very excited. Thank you very much, Awaken Realms. Uh, I've been chatting to them for a while, actually, and uh, I'm very excited about the fact that they're trusting my channel with showing you this stuff, because I do really like Awaken Games, and I'm not saying that because they sent me this. I've been buying them for a while. I really enjoy Nemesis and Nemesis Lockdown. Uh, this War of Mine I got back in the early days, which is great. Lords of Hellas is fantastic. I recently managed to score myself a copy of Ether Fields, which I haven't played yet and I'm very excited about. And of course, Tainted Grail, which has some really atmospheric and exciting writing in it and I really enjoy. So they make some cool stuff. I know there's a lot of extras and it's Kickstarter and everything, but among the Kickstarter publishers, Awaken are right up there at the top. So, enough of my praise. I mean, you know, they're not perfect like anything, and we will, of course, cover some things that I'm not crazy about, but in general, I really enjoy their games because they're really thematic and immersive and story-based, and I love that kind of stuff, as you know well. So, what are we going to do in this video? Well, we're going to unbox ISS Vanguard, and yeah, I know not everyone's crazy about unboxing videos, so if you don't like unboxing videos, just skip this one. You won't enjoy it. I'm going to have a bit of a ramble, I'm going to talk about it as we go through. I don't know too much about the game yet, but when I started opening the boxes, there was so much exciting stuff in here, I just thought, I'm just going to have a chat and show it to people and talk about it as I unbox it. So uh, I hope you enjoy it. Of course, I'm going to be doing more for ISS Vanguard in the future. I'm already started on a rule summary and reference, but I'm going to do something a bit different this time because I always do a rule summary and reference up front to uh, teach myself the game as I'm learning it. In this case, we've got quite a strong tutorial and it leads you through the game. So I'm not going to do a summary and reference before I start to play the game. So I might actually film some of that stuff so you can see how it goes. Um, of course, there'll be spoilers at the start for people who own the game, so keep that in mind. Um, so we're just going to go through the experience of, of uh, discovering this game together. But eventually, of course, I will do a full rule summary and reference. It'll be on my website. Uh, then, of course, there's some miniatures to paint. I've got the sun drop versions in here, and they look pretty cool. So there's a lot to do, a lot to explore. Let's get started just by opening these boxes. I've been rambling enough. Let's get into it. So here we have the big core box. As you can see, it's pretty huge. And let's have a look inside and see what you get. Well, we've got some cardboard here to start with. Not too much, just a few sheets of cardboard. Now, it's really nice to get into some hard sci-fi stuff. And one of the things I like about this is uh, one of their stated goals was to do a kind of positive, upbeat sci-fi game. Um, get away from the sort of gothic horror and everything a little bit. Um, and do something which was more pro-science, which I thought, that's cool. You know, pro-science is fantastic. So we've got some nice counters here. Uh, I've got some standees for the monsters. Or, well, I call them monsters, but aliens or things that you're going to encounter. They're not necessarily monsters. They might be nice people. We just don't understand them yet. And, uh, of course, uh, this set will come with all the miniatures, so I don't think I'll be needing the standees, but there's some nice counters there. Just two sheets worth. And here's our rule book. Now, one thing about Awakened Realms, even though they make great games, they never really made great rule books. Uh, and I found myself going to a lot of trouble to make rule summaries and references that hopefully made them easier to understand because they were a bit all over the place. The great thing about this rule book is that they've finally got someone external to do it. And that person is Paul Grogan of Gaming Rules, who has a long track record of making very good rules books, uh, rule books. And he's tackled some real tough ones in the past too. Uh, Robinson Crusoe he redid, and that rule book was a nightmare originally, and he redid that one. Um, so this one is uh, completely done by him, which is just fantastic because I think it'll be a lot easier to understand. And 
and learn. So really good news. Um, after all these games, Awaken Realms has taken that on board and got a professional to do it. Also, there's uh, some uh, there's a video tutorial you can link to and links to the FAQs and other resources and all that kind of stuff there. And this explains how to use all the cards and the ring dividers and all the things that we'll be seeing in a moment. All the components there. Great stuff. So, very nice looking rule book. Perfect bound too, which is very nice. Now, what have we got? Well, these are used in the ring binder and you may have heard, or you may know, that this game kind of... I'm just going to put this box out of the way a bit. There we go. You may have heard that this game uses a ring binder to uh, store all the information about uh, your spaceship um, as it goes through its travels and um, you can upkeep it and add to it and get updates and new equipment and all that kind of stuff and it's all done in a ring binder. So these are the dividers and the good thing is that these dividers give you the rules for doing these particular things um, on the dividers themselves which is nice with some nice bold artwork too which is pretty cool. So obviously when you go into do some research or something here's all the rules for doing research production getting new characters and new ships and oh wow there's just so much to it love the artwork too love the style they've always had great art awaken med bay probably been eating that a little bit memorial wall so there'd be a section where uh, the people who don't survive your adventures go into so they're the dividers and here's the ring binder itself and this is this is rather attractive look at this here's our spaceship that will be uh, traveling the universe in and it's got a nice uh, section contents thing down the side here and this is where all our information will go so that's pretty cool. It's something different in games, isn't it? Having a ring binder. These are basically your maps, uh, your planets that you're going to visit. Your spaceship's called the Dragonfly, by the way. So I uh, don't want to spoil too much here. I don't think I can if you don't look too closely. But basically, when you explore, explore a planet, you go down to these planets. Um, you can make various dice tests to achieve different things. So, and then go on and explore... Uh, new cards either printed on the planet itself or placed from a deck of cards. So this is pretty cool. I like the sort of background artwork. Just It's kind of uh, just atmospheric, nothing too detailed or distracting. And you can see there's all spaces for cards and things up the top as well. Discovery, threat, etc. So you, I love this because you just instantly get a feel, don't you? I mean, this is obviously a lush planet. This is a barren one. You just get a feel for it straight away, which is pretty cool. Uh, here's the ship itself. Oh, that must be when you go onto the ship. That's cool. So, wow, there's a lot of gaming here. I don't know how long each one of these adventures takes, but apparently you occasionally do go back to the same adventure uh, or the same planet. You can revisit it. And explore it. So there is a small amount of grind when that happens, so I've heard. Um, but there's certainly a lot of new stuff to discover as well. Great use of colour. I mean, a really strong evocative feel for the planet when you see this sort of colour as soon as you open it up. And for some reason, purples and pinks has really become the go-to colours for sci-fi. I don't know why. Victory pool. Do not use until instructed. So, like many um, Awaken games, there's a lot of this discovering as you go and, and don't do things until you're instructed to do it and everything. So, how the, the, the whole legacy idea of gaming has really taken over, hasn't it? I mean, when it started with Pandemic and uh, Pandemic Legacy, and, and now it's become a big thing and, and when you're playing these campaigns that you discover things as you go and, and explore, which is pretty cool. Um, as they always do, it just came with an envelope saying thank you and how much they appreciate it and everything, which is really nice. Good personal little envelope. Uh, there's a secret envelope. Do not open until instructed, so I'm not going to touch that. Okay, we've got a little book here called System Maps. And 
this looks like, well, maps of all the systems we visit. So there's different planets in each of the systems as well. So, wow. A whole universe of planets to explore. Well, maybe not a universe, but there's lots. So, that's pretty cool. Gee, I'm really looking forward to getting into this. Um, this is a little comic book to sort of get you in the, the story, the start of the story. The basic story is, and I don't think I'm spoiling anything with this because it's just the start, is that they discover a map to uh, a, another world or possibly their creators in the DNA of humans. So a bit of a Prometheus feel there. Um, I don't know if they know whether they're going to find their creators. Well, they probably are if it's in their DNA, wouldn't they? You'd think that, yeah. So that's a nice little touch. And then you get these various books which are like story elements and everything. Um, this is the operations book. You'll mark and fill this book as you play operations. Um, you can also use the app. Now for a lot of these things there are app versions as well which is great and apparently it's well voice acted as well. I haven't heard it yet but apparently it is which I love. You know some good voice acting can really get you into the into the story and I actually prefer it to reading. I don't mind reading myself in these kind of games. I quite enjoy it because I think it's a bit of a, a skill you can develop. The more you do it the better you get at it so I think it's quite a cool thing to do. But not everyone's comfortable with reading out passages of text um, and it's good to have the option I think to have the app as well because you know you don't want people to be uncomfortable when they're playing a game. So it's the operations book then we've got a log book which is a big perfect bound book and look at all this stuff. Awakened Realms they must have a whole phalanx of people just writing stuff and coming up with stuff because you'd really need a lot of creativity wouldn't you? I mean, if they if they came to you and said, OK, I want you to write all the planet descriptions and story elements for a game where you go out into the universe and discover things, it'd be daunting. But I find that remarkably daunting. Um, you know, I like to think of myself as creative, but coming up with stuff like that, a lot of it would be pretty tough. Um, so we've got, uh, these look like um, spaceship things. So there's the Dragonfly. There's other ships too. Look, Space Ranger, Fuchslag, Pelican. Void Ranger, these are large ships and small ships. Waygate, utility modifications, so you can obviously add modifications. You've got a certain amount of supplies. So these are used when, um, well, not for the major ship, but for the other ships, when you're going down to the planet, you choose what to take with you when you go down to the planet. Now we've got a lot of ring binder thingies. This is where you store cards in your ring binder. And this is, this is nice, isn't it? Look at these. Uh, they've got printed things on them, so you know exactly where to store stuff. So you can keep track of your injuries, memorials for killed people, I suppose, discoveries, modifications. Wow. That's very impressive, isn't it? Now, the only thing that bothers me about this ring binder idea is that, you know, maybe if you're not into filing and keeping track of all this detail it might be a little bit you know filey <laughs> but I don't know it's it's going to be interesting to, to discover is it is it going to be an enjoyable part of the game or will it be busy work I don't know uh, I've got some now these are great look at these these are character boards um, and as always look at the storage the lovely storage system here really organized these character boards are beautiful. Look how thick they are. That is fantastic. We've got lovely big chunky wells here to put dice in because this is where you're going to store your dice. Love the design of these. Very simple. Good old Futura there, um, which, you know, it was in that typeface was invented in the 20s or something and it still is used to say modern, which is pretty remarkable, isn't it? Just going off on graphic design tangent to invent a typeface like that that lasts for so long is amazing but for it to last long and still look modern it's remarkable isn't it? Good old Futura, it's incredible. I've used it a lot over the years of course um, it's an absolute classic and even its name Futura, they picked the perfect name for it I don't know who the designer is, I should know that offhand but I don't so that's for engineering, we've got Recon, security, 
and science. Science! It's a bit surprising she blinded me with science. Um, if you're my age, you'll know that musical reference. So we've got some miniatures. Mm, so these are the sun drop ones. Um, so normally, of course, I paint my miniatures and I wouldn't need them to be sun dropped. But, um, you know, uh, I, I, they very kindly sent me the all in set and it's sun dropped and I really like it. Because the good thing is, is you've got the four different characters here in the four um, different colours. So they're already in different colours. And really, you don't feel as if there's a huge hurry to paint these. These metallic come, ones come in this blue metallic look. There's our main spaceship. Very impressive. The sun drop effect is quite effective. Um, it's got a stand for it as well. And then we've got some cool characters. So these, cor these correspond to our, our different, um, you know, engineering and what are they called? Science, security, recon. We've got a choice of characters. Nice miniatures. So I think I will, of course, have to paint these up, which is kind of a shame to cover up the sun drop effect. But um, for the meantime, I can start playing and not feel like I'm playing with um, just grey plastic miniatures. Wow, he looks cool. They look like they've got a lot of character. Nice. Wow, we've still got a long way to go. There's a lot in this box. It's a big box. So we've got a nice little bag there. Don't know what that's for. And here's another little bag. Uh, we've got some bases and things, coloured bases. A heap of dice of different colours. Of course, this is a dice based game. So of course, there's going to be lots of dice. Wow, look at that. Very cool symbols on them. You can see quite detailed symbols. Very sci fi looking, very nice. Now, uh, there's an extra dice pack here, and this is, um, I'm not sure if this is a Kickstarter extra or an add on, but uh, these are sort of um, translucent dice. They look slightly sparkly too. Well, look, these are cool. Look at those. They're pretty cool. Um, again, you know, uh, I, w I wouldn't say these are essential, but they're certainly attractive. There's something to be said about the really bold colours though, isn't there? I mean, these aren't quite as clear. That's a very, very dark blue, for example, when you've got a really solid cyan blue there, which is really obvious. Again, red and red. Yeah, well, that's a, that's a difficult decision, isn't it? isn't it? But it's nice to have the choice. Whole lot of dice. Then we have got cards galore. Check out all these cards. And I like these individual wells. These are really nice. These must be for characters because these match the colours of the sun drop things. So a whole lot of cards in there. Look, I mean, if there's one thing Awake can do, it's they just go crazy on the decks of cards. There's so much stuff. Look at this. Now, look, you know, I'm not going to waste your time going through all of these cards. Let's, let's face it, um, it would be crazy. And also, there's spoilers. Um, this is a planetary scanner, which looks cool. Pay the cost above and pay the landing, push the landing card up. So, and then this is another one of these things where you stick a card into it. It's a bit like the, I suppose it's a bit like the thing in Nemesis where you put it into the scanner. I like how they do stuff like that. What's this? There's a little notepad, tiny notepad. Um, sleeves as well. And this is another thing this card game, do, uh, this game does. And I've seen this happening a lot more. Um, it actually reminds me, remember Gloom? It was a game with translucent cards that you stacked on top of each other, which was quite ahead of its time. This is a sort of 
you know, not the same thing, but a, an extension of that. You actually put the, the cards into the sleeves, which have symbols on them. So it adjusts the symbols on the, on the cards. How cool is that? I mean, that's, that's really nice. That really feels like you're making uh, a progression there. And also, it protects the card as well, which is lovely. But um, let's have, just have a look inside, because it looks like... Yeah, see, they're all different colors, so they match the, th the four different types of characters. I think that's really cool. Kind of appeals to me, the idea, idea of doing that. Um, some lovely big cards, too. Yeah, I don't want to go through these because I don't want to spoil anything. And also, when I do a bit of a playthrough, we'll see some of these cards as they pop up. So let's not go into them now. And also, you know, I don't want to take up too much of your time. I'll be here forever. There's other stuff to look at. Let's have a look at it. So that's your corset. As you can see, you know, pretty amazing. When you, if you're talking... I just dropped everything off the table. Nothing damaged, thank goodness. But yeah, I've got limited space here. Yep, everything's fine. Good, let's go on. Uh, yeah, so as I was saying, um, pretty good value, really, isn't it? I mean, you get a lot of components. Now, these are some extra things. And again, I'm not sure if these are add-ons or Kickstarter extras. I'll let you work that out. Um, but we've got some lovely pets. So obviously, when you can go down to the planet, you can get yourself some pets. Again, these are sun-dropped in the four different colours of those uh, different uh, categories for the players. But they're pretty impressive. Look at that. That's pretty cool. It's a nice touch. I like those. Now I've got a dice tower. I mean, this does feel a little bit indulgent. Things like dice towers. I mean, that maybe it's an, ex an extra gift or something. But oh, look, it's even printed. Okay, this is pretty cool. Look, it's got a. It's an MDF board that's actually printed. Now, I'm not going to attempt to make this now because that would be boring, but um, you'll see it later when I do a bit of a playthrough. I'll have made it up. But that's a pretty, pretty cool little thing. There's instructions for building it. A little themed dice tower. Oh, it's like Christmas morning, isn't it? All this stuff. It's one thing I love about games is that it just takes me back to when I was like 12 years old and I was opening games like Haunted House. I've got a copy of it up there. Um, and just that excitement. I've never lost it. I'm here am I, I'm 56 years old. And um, I still love this kind of thing. And I, it, it just rings my bell. I love it. It's really enjoyable. So I've got personnel files. Now this is an add-on here that allows you to expand the stories. They did something like this in Tainted Grail as well, where it brought a more personal story element to each of the characters. So this focuses on their past and current agendas. You've got a personal quest individual story entries so I think that's you know that's a nice thing to add there's a couple of decks of cards and here are all, all your story entries wow check it all out so that'd be nice that's a nice add-on to develop your characters somewhat as you go through now these are weird I don't know what these are they're called section boxes and I, I just don't know what they do but they're certainly impressive, so let's open it up. So you got these things. I mean, they look like they're meant to hold cards or something, but they're also magnetized. Look at that. I mean, how amazing is that? And again, they're in the four different colors for the different departments or character types. Um, yeah. I mean, maybe this is what you store your cards in or anything. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry about it. I'm sort of ignorant at this point of what these things do, but they're certainly beautiful in a weird kind of way. <laughs> um, all the same design, but yeah, sun dropped in different colors. So there you go. That looks very self-indulgent. Of course, what Kickstarter campaign would be uh, a Kickstarter campaign without some mouse map material things? And these look like basically things to organize all your cards and counters on. It's nice. I like how the borders match the color of the characters and everything. And they've got it's the same artwork, but different highlights. They've just recolored it a bit. So not something that's essential, but nice to have. Um, I'll do this one next because that's kind of weird. This is something I've never seen before, which is an entire box of card protectors. Unbelievable. I've, I've never 
bought something like this myself, but I do use card protectors, so I usually buy them separately. Um, look at that. Wow. Um, uh, it's really nice to have these, actually. I mean, I, I love sleeving cards, and I was against it for a long, long time, because I just thought it was self-indulgent and silly. But actually, the big thing about cards for me is that it makes them easier to shuffle. And I'm a bad shuffler. I don't like shuffling. When I play with my friend Dylan, he can get the cards and go... <laughs> Um, which I, always makes me shudder because it kind of bends the cards. Uh, but I'm hopeless at it. And when they're sleeved, they're so easy to shuffle. You just break them in two and you just slide them in together. And apparently it's just like the best way of shuffling because it just brings them, well, as well as that way. It just brings them together really nice. You do that a few times and they're shuffled and done. So I love the sleeves. And this is just amazing to have. Look, because that's a, that would cost a decent amount of money getting that, that number of sleeves. Um, Beautiful. All premium sleeves for all those zillions of cards. So what a fantastic thing to have. I don't know how much that cost extra, but couldn't have been cheap. And by the way, these are really premium quality sleeves. Nice and thick, and they just fit the cards perfectly. Now we've got this Close Encounters box, and this is where we've got all the miniatures are in this box. So... I love how they do this. They put in a sheet that shows you where everything goes in the storage system, which is very, very handy. And look at this. These are sun dropped as well. So, um, again, these ships, I mean, would you paint them? Because this blue metallic look is pretty cool. And you've got another layer under here. It's kind of a lovely storage box. And wow, check these out. So, let's have a look. Let's go for the biggest one first, shall we? Look at that. And look at these bits, these shields. That's very cool. Be interesting trying to paint this with these things on it. I don't know quite how you do that, actually. You'd have to paint around. I don't know how you prime them with those on, but anyway. I mean, these look pretty good. I'm pretty impressed with this, this sun drop technology, really. Um, perhaps you could just paint parts of it. I don't know. I have to think about that. Here's another one with shields. What a cool thing. And there's there's hardly there's a couple of humanoids here, but most of the things are pretty alien. So that's kind of humanoid, and this one is kind of humanoid. But there's lots of weird alien things. I mean, what is that? I don't know, but I hope it's friendly. And then you've got these kind of half mechanical, half organic creatures as well. Um, look at this. I mean, they're truly alien, which is nice for a change. I mean, you're not seeing basically like Klingons and things here. You're seeing stuff which is really quite alien. Really interesting. Now here's, here's something a bit more classic. That doesn't look friendly. Yeesh. So interesting selection of miniatures. And then you've got these lovely, obviously, ships. This is that Waygate one I think we saw before. This blue steel look is pretty cool, isn't it? Check out that one. You. Um, this looks like another kind of fighter of some sort. This looks like some kind of multi-piece thing. How does that work? I don't know. That looks like that goes into... Oh, that's a kind of turret. Kind of turret thing. There's another piece here. I don't know how that works. I'll have to work out how that goes together. No, it's a mystery. Oh, hold on. You can see this bit goes here. That obviously slides into... Oh, I see. So there you go. It's like a, an installation. How cool is that? That's a big gun on the top. Strange looking thing. So, pretty impressive set of miniatures here. 
It's really nice to see some spaceships. And I, I really don't know if I'll bother painting these because they look great with this blue steel effect. It looks like a drop pod from Warhammer 40,000. Very cool. Well, folks, that's uh, it. That's all the stuff from Wave 1 of um, ISS Vanguard. Apparently there's a Wave 2. It might be another year or something. They usually break them into two waves um, because they want to get the game to you quickly. Of course, the problem is you've got to pay shipping twice if you want to get all this stuff up front and then wait for the second one. So that's a trade-off. And one of the reasons I, I just can't afford them myself because they're you know to New Zealand, it's a long way. But um, you can't deny there's a lot of very cool stuff here and certainly a lot of value. It's not like they're skimping on stuff, are they? So many cards in the, in the main set. I love the look of the whole thing. It looks like hard sci-fi. Um, as they said, science-based, which I think is really cool. It's nice to get away from the, from the gothic sci-fi stuff for a change. And I just, yeah, I just love the whole look of it. I'm really looking forward to getting into this adventure. So what I'm going to do um, after this is start playing it and I'm just going to fill it, film it at the same time so you'll be able to experience what it's like if you can bear the sound of my voice. Um, <laughs> isn't it funny? I just hate the sound of your own voice. I, I don't like the sound of my own voice but anyway I hope you don't find it too unbearable. So I'm going to go through uh, at least some starting stuff uh, and give you an idea of how it plays and all that kind of thing and we'll just discover it together a little bit if you want to do that. Um, so if you want to go in completely blind and you don't want anything spoiled, if you've got it yourself, um, obviously don't watch those videos. But if you do um, want to share the experience with me, um, I hope you'll enjoy those videos. I'm going to start filming them soon and we'll discover all this together and see how it works because it looks pretty cool. And I really like the theme. It's a really nice change from, you know, dungeons and all that kind of stuff and fantasy. There you have it, ISS Vanguard. Once again, I must say thank you to Awaken. Um, I'm very, very spoilt. I realize uh, that they sent me this and I appreciate it very much. And I'm going to do some cool stuff for them. You know, we're going to be critical as well. I'm going to just tell you stuff that I don't like and stuff that I like. But um, I do appreciate it because they are games that I really enjoy. I've always enjoyed Awaken stuff. I think that they have a lot of creativity and they're trying to push the boundaries and do things a bit differently. Um, and I really appreciate that in games. Thank you very much for watching, everybody. Of course, go on over to the website at orderofgamers.com. Check it out. You know the whole stuff that is there. There's so much stuff, rule summaries and reference sheets and all the rest of it. Not just a YouTube channel, the Aesthetic Order of Gamers. Oh, no. Every time I do a video, I usually do a rule summary and reference as well. Um, so be sure to check out that website and follow me on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram and all that stuff as well. I'm on Twitter especially all the time. And also the Patreon um, page, if you want to join up, it'd be so appreciated. You get to support my work, but also you get rewards. There are rewards there. You can join the Discord channel and chat with like-minded gamers, which is great. Patreon has its own feed, so I uh, do updates on that page as well all the time. Um, my Patreon backers are very special to me, and I do my best to make um, the whole experience a bit special for them. Thank you very much for watching, everybody. Have a great day. Good gaming. Bye for now.